this is the calling, guys, is um, it's something un indescribable at this point, you know. It's what the world doesn't have. What the world does have is some, some nice things, some things that it has collected over time, some material acquisition. Uh, as uh, James, the brother of Jesus, has said, there's nothing new under the sun when it comes to the rich persecuting the poor. We're talking about those who have, who are well-to-do in this world and, and, and persecuting and harassing those who are less fortunate. You know, I just read the Beatitudes last night and it was such an encouragement to know who's chosen. You know, blessed are the poor. This is, excuse me guys. Yeah, this is, it, it's sad to be in a world where to be able to acquire more and more and more material, one basically has to sell his or her soul at a certain point, you know, where one it be begins to lose the, the authority or the capacity to actually have the Holy Spirit come into one's life. And it truly is. Look, we're at a point in society where salvation is coming to a close and judgment is returning. Um, the spirit of Esau... It, 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 he's on his last leg. Him and his bloodlines, they're on their last leg. They're trying to get rid of the birthright of Jacob as we speak. They're trying to get rid of the human being. Um, and, and look, God can't seem to find his way around that, right, guys? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, look, he wrote the story. And so it's already been prophesied that the power thereof is, is the veil. As the veil is being lifted and we're seeing through this, the power of the birthright which has been stolen and paraded around by Esau for, for centuries right now, it's, we're coming to a, a, not only a crossroads, but, but the end of this age, guys, and to which Satan is trying to hold on to the last of what he has. He has no spiritual authority anymore. He, he, you know, this is the... Guys, look, you've got to make a choice. Go to Christ. God wants you to live out the power that He's bestowed upon your life. You know... Um, we understand that it's a spiritual war, yes. We also understand that God is, is he, He's a God of wonders. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of, uh, etern you know, just the eternal supernatural existence. If you see God, you know, look, this might not go away, but still... You're going to be better for it in the spirit. He's going, to, he's, going to, he's going to basically take you two feet off the ground. That's what God wants for you. He, doesn't want, he wants you to look through this gang stalking. He wants you to go above and beyond that. Hey, nice job, guy. Uh, <laughs> no plates, <laughs> right? Uh, I digress. Um, so, look, this is what it is. I had a good workout today. I'm, they're really, I think they're attacking me because um, I cleared up some issues by taking control of what God would have me to take control. Look, he wants you to live out your free will, but it doesn't mean uh, abandoning what he's brought you through and what, he, what he's brought you to. It's about taking up your cross with all spiritual authority. And God, he's there for you. He's there to uh, lead you through this, this gang stalking, whether you're seeing the physical proxy of this war go on and come at you a certain way in the physical it doesn't mean that you can't overcome it spiritually. You can overcome it spiritually if you set your eyes on Christ, you know. Um, that's the nature of this program. The supernatural can and will overcome the natural, you know. And your vessel is just a part of it. That's it. Look, you've got to overcome. Ask God to overcome your life so that you can overcome the world. He has to be that all-consuming fire, you know. You, there, there's no... There's nothing material that God can equate him to equate himself to at this time of our targeting. So know that, like I said, you got that prophetic chip on your shoulder. Um, you're one step ahead of everybody else. Look, God has, has allowed Satan to drive you out of the apostasy, Christian apostasy, um, the 501c3 um, church that has corrupted and is really for the hybrid bloodlines anyways it's really not for the birthright and so this is one thing to remember is that 
God has loved us so much that he's now beginning to lift the curse. And so you, ha you might have some that want to keep you in man, you know, under man's efforts, but God would not, he would not have you to, to be there and to remain there. All right. And so, yes, you have the, you have the opportunity right now to make some very important decisions for your life. Are you willing to seek out God's revealed will for your life in order that um, gang stalking can take its rightful place and that's behind you? Are you willing to do that? A lot of people just want to tell you if you do it, um, it happened this way for me, like, you know, as seen on TV, you know. No, this is as is in, in reality, you know. It, I'm not guaranteeing you uh, gang stalking is going to stop. It hasn't stopped for me. When I get on a spiritual high, it gets worse. But then again, my, my, you know, my, feet, my feet are on the ground, but my head is in the clouds. So I'm with God anyways. You know, I'm seeing through it all. I'm existing through it. I'm, I'm smiling at the amount of cars that were uh, harassing me earlier this evening. But nonetheless, um, Satan's already lost. All right, guys? So take up your cross, as Jesus says, and follow me. That's what he says. All right? And um, I pray. And I, I ask the same for you guys. Pray, you know, pray for me. Pray that I continue to find God's revealed will in my life so that gang stalking can take its rightful place and God can be glorified in, 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 in you know, you and I standing in our righteous place as he has preordained, as he has pre-written, um, as he has prophesied um, why it's so important to carry that chip on your shoulder in respect to your prophetic calling for your life. That's part of his revealed will for your life. You they, look. There's nothing I can, I can't tell you what to do. You have to seek it out. You and I, in, you know, inwardly. When we're talking about inward, we know what we got to do. We know that we have to get into the Word. We know that we have to pray for one another. We have to pray for our situations. We know that we have to get out of our sin issues. We understand that a lot of us are burdened by a thorn, like a thorn in our side, like Paul was. You know, uh, you know, his could have been sin related. You guys, let me know. I believe. Was there something in the thorn in his, in his side? Uh, maybe it had something to do with him um, um, being a part of, uh, of the killing of, uh, or the, 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 the uh, persecution of, I believe, Stephen. I'm not sure. Um, it could be, you know. But nonetheless, he had to live with that, you know. Some of us, we might have to live with some things that um, we might regret in the physical, but God might you know, forgive us for in, this, for in the spiritual. And that's just the way it is, you know. You can't let them keep you there. You can't let people keep you to the, the physical, uh, temporal aspect of sin in which God wants you to spiritually overcome sin and, be, and, and allow the Holy Spirit to take its rightful place so that sin will uh, supernaturally be overcome in the natural, the, in God's proper order and timing for your life. He has that, that proper place for everything to be overcome in your life. But the question you have to ask yourself is, what am I willing to do? What do I need to do? Where do I have to go? Um, what do I have to do? Who do I have to be? What do I have to seek out in terms of God's revealed will for my life? You know, And that's something that um, each one of us must hoist upon our own shoulders when we're talking about bearing our, our own crosses, picking up our crosses bearing it and following Christ. Not just picking it up, following Christ. I mean, it's tough, guys. Don't get me... All this persecution, all this is a, is a distraction, okay? But are, it, it's worth it when you, when, you, when you ask God to forgive you of your sins, you know, and then, and then you might be let down because, you know, you might have backslidden at some point, you know, but that's not where God would have you to stay if that were the case. He's not going to judge you to remain with your sins. He has already forgiven you. So you have to get back up, stand up, pick up your cross, and follow me as Christ says. And so, each one of us must seek out God's revealed will for our life. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's no doubt about that. We can't look to one another when we're talking about what it is we must do in terms of an actual, having an individual relationship between man and, and, and his God. All right? That's how important the individual human being is to God. All right? And so, like I said, you know, the prophetic gift is a calling, guys. It's, it's an existence. You're already in response to it. This gang stalking is already letting you know that you are um, 
we're already, you know, we're already knee deep up Shit's Creek, right? So let's not let's not forget that we're 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 running the race uh, in and of ourselves, all right? And um, God's here to help us get get there. No man can put himself in between us and God in order to stop us from what God has for us, what God has promised to us. That's the thing we must remember: is God loves you so much. His cause is unchanging. All right, God. Look, people think because we have an emotional, we get to a physical temptation in life or something that goes on that all of a sudden God has an emotional breakdown. No, no, no. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't work humanly like that. What's so great about God? Why he's why he's the the, the one and true God? Here's why. His cause is unchanging. He is love. So. When we, when we turn our backs or when we change, he doesn't. That's his standards. That, that's his glory, guys. That's his greatness. Is I used to begrudge the fact that God wouldn't compromise, you know? I realized, though, that, you know, that's, that's for me to do in the flesh in order that, 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 that I can give access to the Holy Spirit in my life. God is so much greater because he does not compromise. His standard is so great. He loves us that much. His cause of eternal unchangeableness is so you know it's it's everything he's so worth it and I, I think about these four words every day and I and I suggest you guys do the same think about where you are are you giving God all the praise all the honor all the worship all the glory every day those four things and I think man that's what I want that's the life you know because like I said, look, Christ, man has manufactured Christ to something else of the world. And the world has accepted Christ up to some point. But the one who Christ calls out, he's put us into the response of what it is to be called already with this, with this gang stalking. He's already let us know, look, I'm, I'm saving myself a remnant here, an elect who can't be deceived. And some want to tell us we are, but the scriptures already say that we can't. There's another one lighter. You know, I digress. But that's, you know, that's the thing, guys, is God has already written these things. Are you going to accept them for what he has already prophesied them to, to come about? Are you going to accept it? Or are you going to still um, pretend that God is going to compromise at some level because of the place that he has you in right now? No, he has you in this place for you to compromise and overcome yourself and be able to live up to the guarantee that he has awaiting for, for you and I. And so, guys, be encouraged this evening. You know, this is, I don't, get, I don't get this much energy. I don't get this much clarity. Uh, but when the, Spirit, when the Spirit speaks, I just let it go. You know, that's just the Spirit doing its thing. You know, I think my ministry of, of being called to exhort and coach people who are downtrodden, people who, are, people who have had a lot of loss in life, who have taken so many L's in this world, like myself, who've, who have taken so much rejection. You know, um, that's why they hate us because the spirit in us judges them. Christ in us judges them already. They're already in the worst place they can be in. You know, they're hanging on. But until it's realized when it's too late, it's not, it's going to be, you know, they're not going to be able to turn back after that. So. Yeah, be encouraged, guys, that you're in the position that you're in and that you have the you still have free will. You know. You still have the power of the, the spirit in your life. And until the Holy Spirit is is taken away, and um, you know, whatever happens to us, it doesn't matter. Pray that you're count pray that you're you are counted worthy. Pray that um, you count your blessings. In a, in a spiritually mature manner for what God has given you, what he has shown you. You know, a lot of people are unable to do this. A lot of people are too downtrodden, too weakened by all this. But you, you got to make the choice. You got to step into it. You know, you got to take the leap of faith. You know, and um, it seems like a lot of these devils don't want to stop properly. You could tell there's something... You, you can see the demon that's driving the vehicle. There's something when it's agitated, very agitated state of driving, you know. And um, 
nonetheless, guys, look. When you understand that you have a calling on your life, and when you're when you're ready to realize that you've been chosen out of this world, um, let there not, let nothing get in between you and your, you and your God. Let nothing, because that's that will be you um, coming to a place where you're unwilling to compromise for the the standard that God has set before your life, and letting you know, hey, look, I've chosen you out of this world already. You know. And, and think about it this way. Wouldn't you rather, and I think about this every day, what are you going to be doing in heaven? We're going to be worshiping constantly, 24-7. So why not make that the, the, the forefront of your life now? Are you worshiping 24-7? We're not going to have time for looking back. And worrying about this gang stalking in this world. The scroll will be rolled up. And that will be the, you know, it will be finished. That's it, guys. I want to encourage you guys with this. Look ahead. Don't even stop. Be blessed. Choose it. Choose to be blessed. Choose to live it out. Understand that God loves for you. He loves you. And he, you know, his standard is unchanging. And that's, that's why we're still here. Because Satan's a little sellout. He hands out gift cards. Satan is such a little snitch, guys. Anywho, guys, I gotta go. Um, guys, keep me in prayer. Uh, we got more to talk about. Stay tuned. So, until the next one, I love you guys. Alright, guys. Godspeed.